Well, good morning. This is Sunday morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Well, my message this morning is called, Do You Know Who You Are? Let me tell you. Let me tell you who you are. You are a champion. Now, before we get into the message, let me just share this with you. No matter what you have been going through, we have been talking about fear. And we can go over and over and over again about fear. Now, I believe you know it by now. But today, I'm going to change the flow by the Holy Ghost is, and to talk about, do you know who you are? But before we do, let's go ahead and receive our regular tithes and offerings. As we do normally, give your tithes and offerings because the Bible says so. Bring all your tithes into the storehouse. Now, you can give your tithes and offerings online. You can go to livingwordchurch.faith and give that way. Or you can give and go to the app of Easy Tithe. Or you can either give that way or you can text it in. Or you can just drop it off by the office. We'll be in the office all week. Or you can just mail it in. Amen. Now, so I want to encourage you to continue supporting all you that's listening that you don't come to Living Word. Make sure you support your local church and your tithes and offerings. During this time, the church runs on the giving of the people. Now, if you uh, listen to me and you don't, this is not your home church, then I don't want your tithe. They don't belong here. You send your tithe to the, to the local church. Now, let's get into the message this morning. Do you know who you are? You are a champion according to the Word of God. What is a champion? A champion is a warrior, a fighter, a winner. A denominator. You are a denominator. You, you dominate things in your life. The Bible says in him you live and move and have your being. Now once you find out who you are in him, let me tell you what. In him you become invincible. Not in yourself, but in him we become invincible. Which means incapable of being conquered, overcome, or subdued. See, you have the name of Jesus to use that name against everything that comes against you that's negative, any sickness, any disease, or any infirmity, or lack, whatever. All power had been invested in that name. So therefore, you are a champion because in him you do live and move. And have your being. That means in that name and in him, you are unbreakable, unstoppable, and unshakable. A champion is unwilling to accept defeat. You will not be defeated. So rise up and be who God has called you to be. Luke chapter 21 verse 19 says in the Message Bible, Keep your eyes open. Hold, hold tight. To your convictions. Give it all you got. Be resolute. What does it mean when he tells us to be resolute? It means to be bold. It means to be steady. It means to be determined. The Bible said the righteous is bold as a lion. You're bold. You're steady. And you're determined. Therefore 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14. Now thanks be unto God which always calls us to triumph in Christ. Always means all the time. All the time in him you triumph. All the time in him you take authority. Always in him you live and move and have your being. See, always causes us to have success, to win, to have victory. And to come out on top. You know 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith. A good fight is a fight that you win. A good fight is a fight that you win. Amen. Lay hold on eternal life. 
whereunto thou art called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. I like what the Living Bible says. Fight on for God. Keep fighting the good fight of faith. Your biggest battle is in the play. The devil, he loves to play in your mind because that's the battleground. You win and lose battles in your mind every day. But don't let that devil defeat you in that thought life. You overcome him. Let him know that you are, in, you are a champion. Romans eight thirty seven. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Too many people are defeated in life because of what they think. They think they can't make it if they won't make it. But when you start thinking you're an overcomer, you will be an overcomer. You can't be a champion unless you're convinced you are one. And the Bible says that you are. The message Bible says none, Paul says none of this phases us because Jesus loved us. In verse 38, I'm absolutely convinced that nothing, nothing living or dead, angelic or demonic, Today or tomorrow, high or low, thinkable or unthinkable, absolutely nothing can get between us and God's love because of the way that Jesus, our master, has embraced us. Don't look at yourself as a failure. God did not make you a failure. God made you the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. You are winners. You can overcome anything that comes against you because the greater one lives on the inside of you. And besides that, you have the word of God and you have the name of Jesus and you have angels that's on your side. Man, you got it made, praise God, as a champion. Abraham said in Romans 4, 21, he was fully persuaded what God has promised he was able to perform. God told Abraham that he was going to have a son, and Isaac shall be his name. Abraham was fully persuaded what God has promised. The word, the word fully means he was free from the fear of contradiction. No matter what came against him, when the flesh says you can have a child, but when God's spoken, it is so. David told Goliath, in 1 Samuel 17, 46, This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hands, and I will smite thee and take thy head from thee. So what is your Goliath? Is it lack of finances? Come against it. What is your Goliath? Is it sickness and disease? Then come against it. What is your Goliath? Is it a bad report from the doctor? What is your mountain? Jesus says, Who shall, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed. He didn't say talk about it. It says, command it into the sea, and it will obey you. So, Romans 8, 31, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who could be against us? You know, don't talk about your problems. Talk to them. Don't talk about what's going on. Speak against it. Why? Because you're a champion. You are a champion. Get out of the pity parties. You know, get out of the mud, your mistakes and your failures. Go on with God and press in and be the champion that God has anointed you to be. Some people, all they talk about is the past. But Paul said, this one thing I do Forgetting those things which are behind, and I press forward. No one has a perfect past. No one has a perfect present. And no one has a perfect future. But you are in him perfect. God looks at you under the blood. If you've asked God to forgive you, then he did. You've been washed in the blood of the lamb. You have been cleansed. So let the past go. Don't let the devil play with your mind and remind you of your past. When he does, 
you remind him of his future. His future don't look too bright either. We are champions. You know, giving up is never an option for you. Don't give up. Lock the door of your past and, 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 and throw away the keys. Let it go. Amen. Just let it go. It takes a decision to let it go. Don't live, live by the way you feel. Let it go. Let go of what? Let go of the past hurts, the past disappointments, failures, a bad marriage, broken relationships, offenses, abuses, and be what God has called you to be. You know why? Because God sees you in him. See, when you look into the mirror at home, you look into the mirror and you see yourself the way you really are. You see yourself, ladies, with no makeup. You see yourself, the hair is all messed up. You need to brush your teeth and beautify yourself. And men, what do you see? Your hair is all messed up. Your beard is out. You say, oh, my God, I need help. Well, the good news is this. Look into the perfect law of liberty. God sees you in him. God sees you beautiful. God sees you a champion. God sees you above only, not beneath. Don't look on the natural. Do what you can to beautify yourself. But you know what? Inside, God has already made you beautiful. He's already glorified your spirit, man. You are brand new in him. Amen. So this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are in the past. You know, the good news is 1 John 4, 4 says, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome the world, because greater is in you than he that's in the world. You are of God. You are of God. I am of, in, in my flesh, I am of the moss family. I was born a moss, and I will always be a moss. Oh, but thank God. In, that, in, in the Moss family, certain things will run in your family. Or in your family, things will run in your family. But now, we are in the family of God. You know what runs in my family? Divine health. Divine wisdom. Kingship. All the goodness that God is. He's in me. So therefore, I will boast in the Lord who have delivered me from that stuff and put me into a new bloodline, flow from the master's veins. Thank God. Amen. So I am of God. That means I'm a champion, and so are you. You know, Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, it says in the Message Bible, it says, to prosper... Reproduce, fill the earth, and take charge. Now, it says take charge. You are to take charge. You are a child of God. You are of him. And he said, behold, I give unto you power and authority. You have that God-given authority to take charge, to reproduce, and to be that champion. And don't ever face your Goliath with your mouth shut. When you face your Goliath, open your mouth and speak the word of God. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. That means you take charge. Amen. Psalms 8 and verse 4, the New Living Translation says, You gave them charge of everything you made, putting all things under their authority. He's talking about you are a child of God. A lot of people don't know the how this God-given authority. You just under, need to understand. We need to understand that we have that God-given authority. That's why we're champions. I'm not boasting in myself. I'm boasting in the Word of God. The Bible says boasting is excluded by the law of faith. So who's in charge? When we really know who we are, when you know who you are, maybe you've had a bad past life. Maybe you missed it. Maybe you have sinned. 
Maybe you had some uh, disappointments and, and, and maybe you had a messed up life. But let me say this to you. There is nothing that you can do to stop God from loving you. He loves you regardless of who you are. Now, he may not be pleased by, by the things you do, but he loves you. You can't, you can't stop him from loving you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He didn't come to condemn you. He's made you in his likeness. He made you in his image. God said, let, me, let us make man. And God made man, male and female. And therefore, to know what I am, if God made me, the Bible says, God is a spirit. You are a spirit being. And that champion spirit is in you. That overcoming spirit is in you. It's in, in DNA. It's yours. You are inside. I like what Miss Woodsworth said. He said, you are a thousand times bigger on the inside than you are on the outside. The message Bible says, you put us in charge of your handicraft world. Repeat it to us, your Genesis charge. If you are a champion, let me ask you this question. If you are a champion, if you know who you are in him, if you know who you are in him, now if you don't know who you are in him, then you can't be a champion. You must know who you in, you who you are. Now listen. Find out who the Father is, what he has, and what he can do. Then you'll know who you are and what you have and what you can do. And the devil, you'll find out the devil is nothing. He has nothing. He can do nothing to you because you know who you are in him. And when you resist him, Without authority, he's got to flee. That's why the Bible says, resist the devil, he'll flee. He'll run as in terror because of the name of Jesus, because of the Spirit of God in you, because you are a champion. Now, when you know who you are, the devil will not be in charge of your health. You will. When you know who you are, the devil will not be in charge of your finances. You will. When you know who you are, the devil will not be in charge of your destiny. You will. When you know who you are, the devil will no longer be in charge of your marriage. You will. When you know who you are in him, the devil will not be in charge of your business. You will. Now do you understand in him we live and move and have my being? I have what I have. I am what I have, am by the grace of God. You know, he will not be in charge of your life. You will. He will not be in charge of your family. You will when you know who you are. See, if we walk in the love of God and walk in this God-given authority, we can overcome every circumstance no matter the Bible says, according to your faith, be it unto you. When you know who you are in him, he'll not be in charge of your dreams. You will. Because you have a heart of a champion. I want to encourage you this Sunday morning. Think differently. Think yourself as a champion. Because you are. If God says you're more than a conqueror, then you are. It may look like defeat. It may feel like defeat. It might smell like defeat. And others may tell you it's a defeat. But remember who you are. You are a champion. You are a champion. So what does that tell me? I expect to win. I expect to walk in victory. I expect to dominate. I expect to overcome. Faith is an expectancy. Romans, Revelation 5.10, And hath made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. 
The Weymouth translation says, shall reign as kings. My, 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 my. Glory be to God. Do you really know who you are? Do you know who you are? Verse 17 says, For if one man's offense death reign by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. It didn't say you shall be defeated in life. You shall reign in life. A king reigns. It means to have dominion. You have been chosen and anointed to reign in life. So, dear brothers and sisters, take your place. Rise up and be that champion. Who are you? Who are you? Look in the mirror and say, who are you? And talk to yourself. I say, I know who I am. I am of God. And I overcome everything that comes against me. Because God's inside of me. You see, you are a king. You have a throne. And you have subjects. And the devil's under your feet. You have authority over the devil. Amen. You do. Why? Because you're a champion. You're king. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4. Where the word of a king is, there is power. No wonder the church is described as an army. Ha <laughs> ha. It's an army of kings. No wonder the church is not only a family, but we are kings and priests. Get out of the holes and get out and fight the good fight of faith and be that man of God and that woman of God and that young person of God. You know why you're blessed? Because Jesus is the king of kings. When the devil says that you're going to not make it, when the devil says you're not going to make it, you say, shut up. I have a crown. I have a scepter. I have a robe. I'm a king. Bow your knee and get out of here in the name of Jesus. There's so much I can talk about and, and, and I can go on and on and on. But I believe I shared my heart with you. But one more thing. I've got something else the Lord gave me. July the 16th, 2019. This is called Be the King You Are Inside. As a matter of fact, you can go to livingwordchurch.faith and you can go into our website and go to the right hand side this little phrase that says words of inspiration there's around 190 of these that the Lord gave me I believe God is speaking to his people amen and I thank God that he uses me along this line many others too but this is what he gave me July the 16th, 2019. Be the king of whom God have always meant for you to be through the knowledge of his word inside. For where the word of a king is, there is authority. So stand up tall and don't run and hide. You don't have to be afraid of the enemy. Just take your stand and make a decree. Because as a king, you need to act on what God has created and anointed you to be. You have a crown, a robe of righteousness, and much more. So use them all. And don't you back down or be afraid and give up by going AWOL. David ran toward the giant with words of authority in his mouth and then said, Today I'm going to defeat you in front of this army and then I'm going to take off your head. You have more ability to walk in victory than David did because the greater one is in you. So go forth and take your stand because God have made you a king and a priest unto him and delivered you from the enemy's hand. So he is, so as he is, so are we in this world. So put the devil in his place. Don't give him any foothold in your life and don't give him any space. How do you see yourself? Do you see yourself the way God sees you? Or do you see yourself weak, defeated, and confused and don't know what to do? Things will become different if you take your rightful place where you were always meant to be. 
a king that is walking in his authority as a champion, a ruler over all the power of the enemy. So look inside yourself as a child of God and remember who you are and be what God have made you to be as you follow the Lord, your morning star. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for these people right now that you will enlighten their eyes, open the eyes of the understanding, show them revelation of who they are in you. And, Father, we thank you that you said you watch over your word to perform it. And I thank you for this message. It will produce results. In Jesus' name, amen. So be it.